This month brings some PinePhone hardware news, as well as initial PineNote impressions and early development progress, as well as AffiniTime 1.4. We also have some exciting news for our community developers, as we are introducing DevZone bounties. This is the video version of the community update, and the longer, written version is available on the Pine64 website. This isn't as detailed as the written version, but it should give you the synopsis. Also thanks to JF, Clover, Caleb, Martine, Dank12, Chris, Brian, and Lucas for helping out with this video. And for more open source related content, including Pine64 content, check out my channel, Pizza Loving Nerd. Let's get into it. Late last month, we announced that the dev zone was being made ready for internal testing, and over the past four weeks, we've received quite a lot of feedback from developers to improve dev zone. The platform has reached a point where we feel happy to accept more participants aboard, and we are going through all the applications and some developers may have already received an invitation. On top of all this, we will be introducing bounties to the platform once the system is populated. This is a way to accelerate development in various areas by providing financial incentives to contributions through DevZone. Such bounties will usually apply to things that are difficult to implement or solve, and the Pine Store has committed to putting a substantial sum of funds into the bounties, and we hope that this will become a hallmark of our development system. In other news, Pine Talk is back after a two-month hiatus. The community ran show focuses on Pine64 news and will resume shortly with new hosts and a reworked schedule. The plan is to have an episode dedicated to the discussion of news and a following one to community and partner project related topics. This will be available on pretty much all podcasting platforms as well as here on YouTube, Odyssey, and PYL vids. So check it out if you haven't already. As you may or may not know, Pine64 hosts all of its community services on its own hardware, and earlier this month, Gammy posted the first entry in a series about the maintenance process of the hosting cluster. This post explains the reasons for the maintenance, discusses the planned upgrades, and shows off the temporary setup while the cluster undergoes maintenance. It's been two years since the very first Pine phones have entered production, and in November of that year, we shipped the first Pine phones with the first version of the PCB. It's very impressive to see how fast the Pine phone and mobile Linux community as a whole has been progressing, and in a very short amount of time, we have made the dream of a Linux mobile phone possible for tens of thousands of people. In terms of hardware for the Pine phone, these past couple weeks were a race to finish the keyboard firmware and have it successfully flashed on the factory floor. The details aren't important, but this firmware was a time-consuming challenge for Maggie and our product team. Some of the features this firmware will have is user-customizable keys, including being able to customize the modifiers in nearly unlimited ways, and this means users will be able to set their preferred layouts and alter key behavior without needing to flash firmware to the keyboard. We have encountered some issues on the factory 4, not related to the hardware, but the testing software's compatibility with the production keyboard, and as soon as this gets resolved, production will be underway. Also, the fingerprint and wireless charging cases are now ready and will appear in the Pine Store as soon as they are greenlit by developers. If you are interested in picking one up, you can keep yourself notified of their availability in the coming weeks through our news channel and our social media platforms. Wadroid has been packaged for Arch Arm, and a test package has been released for both Arch and Manjaro. This test package does need some fiddling around to get it working, and it has quite a few issues with crashes and color inconsistency. Luckily, one month later, Wagerade's team has made loads of improvements, including less crashes and better color accuracy. According to Dank12, it can run even faster than Anbox can. This project is still very new and has a lot of room for improvement, but it is progressing very fast. Megapixels has had a new release and is now at version 1.3.0. The major change in this release is more contrast in the post-processing script to give photos more vivid colors and nicer looking images. Work is also being done to make the amount of this processing appliable and configurable through Megapixel settings. Last month we announced PineNote, so if you missed that update we recommend you read it or listen to the video version. Lucas has had access to the PineNote for a little over two weeks and is pleased with how it turned out. He finds it just the right size, light and natural to hold without feeling bulky, and the construction feels solid, 
and the display has good contrast even when compared to big corporations producing e-paper devices. And the display is under two layers of digitizers and it still looks good. The white and amber front light is really good, lighting the entire panel to the point of it being visible even in broad daylight. However, Lucas doesn't like the cover that it comes with that much, because according to him, it doesn't feel very good in the hand, although there is a planned redesign for later versions of the case. The other thing Lucas doesn't like is that the pen cannot attach to the tablet without a case, although that is not that big of a deal since most will use a cover with an embedded magnet to hold the pen anyway. On the software side, Caleb has been working on U-Boot and the e-paper panel because they believe that U-Boot is responsible for loading the waveform data that enables panel functionality. However, testing this will require developers to get Linux booting on the Pine Note first, as PG Wipeout's current 64 kernel has an issue detecting the eMMC. This will likely be a very easy fix to get it working, and the hope is to get image output working soon after the device first boots Linux. The capacitive and Wacom digitizers have been mainlined, which means basic functionality should be available to developers very soon. If you are interested in this project, we expect the Pine Note to be out for early adopters in October. In the written version of the community update, Newton668 wrote a guest post about setting up two Pine Cubes for both indoor and outdoor security usage. These Pine Cubes ran Arbion with kernel 5.11. The indoor one had motion capabilities and auto-pinged a private matrix server which allowed for notifications as well as an off-site backup. The outdoor Pinecube, which was harder to set up, worked using power over ethernet and a custom case to withstand the elements. I'm not going to go into full detail of this in the video version of this community update, but if you are interested in learning more about how to set up a fully open source camera system using the Pinecube, I invite you to read the blog post version to which you will find a link in the description. AffiniTime 1.4 was released a few days ago with loads of features, including the project's 1000th GitHub commit. This version comes with a reworked touch driver that improves the reliability and, in my experience, the accuracy, as well as a color picker for the Pine Time style and other improvements. WaspOS has also seen some major changes this month with support for the newer Pine Time models, a fix in the weather app, and a bunch of other bug fixes. In terms of companion apps, Affini iOS released two beta versions on GitHub with many functions such as time syncing, heart rate monitoring, and battery level monitoring, as well as over-the-air updates, among other things. This is available through Apple's test flight program, so feel free to try it and provide feedback to the author if you own an iPhone. There is also a new library for the Go programming language that allows interaction with the Pine Time, and a new companion app for Ubuntu Touch, which many users were requesting. In July, we introduced you to the Pindeo stack, a dev kit for the Buffalo BL604, which provides onboard features such as a LoRa module, SPI flash memory, a LCD and touch panel port, as well as motion and heart rate sensors. For the past month, testing has been done on prototypes with the goal being to provide as much feedback as possible to the product team so they can design the best hardware for the stack. Some things that have been done with it include pairing it with an e-ink display, as well as a stripped down version of AffiniTime running on the BL604 SoC and establishing a connection to the LoRa Pindio gateway. As usual, in the engineering world, not everything works the first time. But if you are interested in the debugging process of this board, you should read this article from Lepian that provides many details about all the techniques and tools we put in place to debug the LCD controller. So, that was the video. We hope you've had a great month before the next update, and cheers!